I will try to make this without too many slides, but hopefully in the end I'll get technical enough to show you the internet on the screen. 13 years ago, the National Library of Norway made a decision that uh, was existential to us. We decided that we would have to and should digi digitize our entire collection, or everything. And the National Library of Norway holds uh, not only books or newspapers, we hold all the film, music, broadcast, all the man manuscripts, all the books, all the newspapers, all the commercial ads, all the folders, all the, all the sports magazines, all the porn and all the missionary magazines of Norway. We have everything. Everything that is produced for the public sphere, no matter what kind of material it is uh, or medium it is. I'll take away that one. The first transition to create a digital library was to create an industrial library. The library had to transform. We're talking about free walls in the mountains up north in Wirana of Norway, filled with material that we were going to digitize. So to do that, we had to transform into an industrial library. Today we have 100 and 25 people working in the digital department of the library. Of those, between 50 and 60 are tech people. Computers, scientists, people working to run our computer systems and so on. Tech guys and tech, tech girls. The other half, 50 to 60 people, are factory workers. Industrial workers. People working scanners. People working scanners, operating, sitting in rooms, digitizing music, and so on. We transformed our library from being a place of reference where all resources was put into, were put into creating reference for researchers who came for us to ask, can you help us with this? Can you find material in the medieval ages? Can you find anything about Norwegian pop music in the 50s? Can you help us research newspapers from the 30s? And we had loads of people working on that. We realized that we couldn't continue this way. So instead of referencing people one-on-one, -on -one, we transformed into a place where we digitize the material and make it available for the researchers themselves. This was a hard change. Libraries are knowledge institutions. People working in libraries are wise people. They have glasses. They look into books. They know stuff. We replaced them with people working in machines in a factory, in a digitizing factory, and computer guys and gals. And we succeeded. Today, 12 years later, we have digitized all the books ever produced in Norway. Half a million books, all digitized. Every single one of them, searchable. Every single one of them, OCR treated. We have digitized two million newspapers 40 million newspaper pages. That is about 50% of all the newspapers ever produced in Norway, and we will be finished with all the newspapers in about five to eight years. We have digitized more than half the broadcast, all the radio and TV ever screened in Norway, digitized already. We have 30% of the music, and the reason we don't have more of the published music is that we wait for a big dump from our state broadcaster who already ripped it, so we don't digitize it twice. We have enormous amounts of film, of non-published film, of journals, and so on and so on. We have succeeded not in taking digitizing the full collection, but we have succeeded to the point where we realize we will be able to do that. It was not just a word, something we said. We will actually be able to succeed, to have a fully digital Norwegian library. Our task is to create, to hold the Norwegian memory. Our task and assignment from the state is to keep Norwegian memory, and that memory will be digital. But that leads us to the second transition of a digital library. Because why do we digitize all this? 
And very often when you talk about it, particularly with politicians, you talk about digitizing to preserve. We save heritage. But it's not true. Digitizing material is in, I would say, 95% of uh, the occasions the opposite. It's not preserving because paper, which we have digitized the most of, is extremely, uh, what should you say? <sighs> preservable. Paper we can store in our vaults, climate uh, uh, operated in the mountains for a thousand years, most paper won't get any damage. How many people be here believe that this computer will be able to run in a thousand years? There's not a chance. The digital is tangible. The digital is uh, extremely uh, fluent. Uh, the digital is destroyable. We transport every file, every digital object to a new carrier every fourth year because it only lasts for four years. The digital is not a place you preserve. Of course, some material, old manuscripts, uh, music and film particularly that we are about to lose because the magnetic uh, tapes that they are on are, are vanishing, are being destroyed. Yeah, we preserve we save. But it's not the point. The point about the digital library is basically to give access. The magic of the digital is that you can give access. Where you could only give access to one and one and one, you can give access to everybody. We all know this, but we have to repeat it to ourselves. Access is the point of it. So the second transition of the digital library, uh, or creating a digital library, is to gain access. To give access to the material. And you can see all these books at the top of you, they have a, a hand. It says no, can't open, you're outside of Norway. But since they're all in Norwegian, it's not a big problem, because I guess I'm the only one who can read those books. But we started working on access. So what we did was to create a cooperation with the Norwegian publishers and authors organizations, and we created a deal. And I need to remind you that the, the reason we started this project at first was that Google said, we will digitize everything. And when Google said that, our response was, fuck. We need to do that before Google. And one reason is, of course, if Google is the na national library, we're out of wor work, basically. If Google takes over, uh, we would fear the competition. But the real reason is not that. The real reason is that Google said, we will digitize everything and we won't pay. We won't pay anybody anything. We want to give access to all the books of the world without paying a dime. Which sounds very nice if you're a reader, but not particularly nice if you're a librarian, an author, or Norwegian. Because our basic system for producing books is based on the cooperation between authors, publishers, and the state. The state buys 1,000 copies of every book produced in Norwegian that's qualifying and distributes for free to all the public libraries. This gives an income to the authors, gives an income to the publishing house and security for production, and it gives access to the books all over Norway, for free, for the people. So he said, we need to copy this in the digital, for, because Google, Google won't do that. So we do that. We digitize the books, and we made an agreement with the publishers that we pay an annual fee for access. So every book produced before the year 2000 is readable for every Norwegian IP address, everywhere in Norway. You can search it, you can read it, you can not do anything but download it. It's streamed. At that time, streaming was difficult. Now streaming is not a problem anywhere. So you can basically use it as a reading book. For the newspapers, we digitized the newspapers in cooperation with the publisher of the newspapers. They partly paid for it, and if they didn't pay, they had to give us a possibility to give access to everybody in Norway in return. So they got digital copies in return for us giving the digital copies to the, to the Norwegians and to the world. And then came uh, a new legal deposit law that changed everything. Because access for newspapers, books, films is all copyrighted. We worked on each and one of them to make contracts. But now the new legal deposit law of Norway says We, as a national library, will receive 
all the digital files used for production of books, film, music or whatever. We no longer have just legal deposit of a physical object, we have le le uh, legal deposit of the files behind the physical object. If it's published, published digitally, yes, of course, but also if it's public, uh, published analog. If it's a paper book, there's still a file behind it. If it's a CD, there's still files behind it. Everything published has a file behind it, and we get access to that file. They have to deliver it to us. So we get everything digitally, which also makes it possible for us to digitize our backlist, because we don't need to digitize any new material. But in return for this, access to researchers, research libraries, and also researchers and public libraries all over Norway has to be given through a digital service. They don't want the paper anymore. They want to be able to get everything, and they can through the law, and they have to do it digitally. So access is suddenly two things. Access is both access to the public, but also now access to researchers, librarians, politicians, whoever have the right to access our memory, they would do it through the service. Which leads me to the third transition. When the digital library becomes the library. And mind you, I'm not, I do not think that the digital library will replace the physical library. I don't think the book will die. Everybody who's been in the same room as an old manuscript or an old map knows that whatever happens on your screen can never replace the feeling of being in touch with a thousand-year-old object. Digital and analog is, are not the same. They have similarities, but they are not the same. People still read books. People still want to read books. People still want to touch the tangible. But the digital library still becomes the library because it becomes the primary library. And then comes the challenges. Because we have now in this library more or less <sighs> all together, I'm not even sure, uh, three million digital objects on, uh, on this, two and a half digital objects on the backlist. So we have like three, four or five million digital objects. I think we have today 7.1 petabyte of material. It is stored in three different technologies, three different places. All in all, 21 petabyte. We have 150 million pages more or less scanned and then all the news, all of this. It's enormous and it's growing still. We are producing 30, about 30,000 new images just every year, every month. Uh, and that's just for pictures, uh, books, journals and so on. It keeps, keeps growing, keeps growing all the time. But it's not a library. It's a wall. It's a wall of information. It's far more information than any of us can ever dream of accessing as humans. It's also a wall of information where you don't know how to find what you're looking for. What I just did and showed you here is a search where I searched for Lech Walesa. The reason I did that is, of course, he's Polish. And because he was my hero once and then wasn't a hero anymore. But I just want to show you that just doing this in the Norwegian National Library, if you look to the, to the right, you get 20,000 hits. 20,000 hits in a digital library in Norway on Lech Valenza. 19,000 of them being in newspapers, but also more than 1,000 in books. And then 89 in journals, because still we digitize new journals. How on earth are we navigating this? How can you navigate it? Well, you, could, you can choose, for instance, newspapers. And if we're online still, we will go there, yeah. And you can choose the area of archives, who's... And you could choose this newspaper, which you're interested in. And you could choose the time period for 1989. And you come far. But this is when you know what you're looking for. I'm looking for something that was published in archives, which is in this newspaper in 1989. But most of the time, when we went to libraries, when we go for culture, when we are out in the world, we actually don't know what we're looking for. Not even as researchers. And the fun part is finding things you didn't look for. And this is where AI comes in. Comes in. Because it's not possible to make people use this library if we don't create landscapes, if we create if we do not create something different than a physical library. 
So first of all, we need to create services. And we learn from Google, we learn from everybody. We will learn from Spotify or Netflix or whoever does anything, who sells anything and try to use their tools. But we need more. So the past two years, we have starting to work with uh, automized uh, creation of metadata. Creating tags, basically. Librarians create a catalog. We need to start creating tags. Georeferencing, tags about the people in a, in a book uh, or in a newspaper or in a map. Tagging what it's about. Tagging basically the same way as you would tag on uh, YouTube or Instagram or wherever. The way you tag something to refine it. We need to tag. We can crowdsource tagging, but we also need to do it automatically. So we're doing that. And while we were doing that, we start to realize, well, tagging is one thing and algorithm is one thing, but the real interesting stuff is the AI. So for two years, we've trained an AI. It's based on open software from, from Google, Sen TensorFlow, is that, isn't that the name? TensorFlow, TensorFlow. So it's based on that, and we're training it. So far, we've gone two directions. We trained the AI to become a librarian. She's called Nancy. She's named after Nancy Pearl, who is a famous Seattle-based librarian who also has an action figure. And the action figure is sitting behind her desk like this. It's a very bad librarian, by the way. Uh, but we're training her. And she's now able to catalog in Dewey. And she can do it six. For those who are, if you are not librarians, she can do, go down six digits in Dewey, which means that she can... She's not perfect, but she has a 95% hit rate if she has a, 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 a training set of 100 to 200 articles or books on that digit number, which is helpful. Problem is that training an AI to become a librarian is very useful if you think that Dewey will be very useful in the future and people will use Dewey to uh, 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 organize themselves or navigate this digital library. We don't think they will or I don't think they will. So the mo more interesting stuff is to train Nancy to read this material and help you find it and re-find it. To help you uh, find bet amongst all these 20,000 articles about L'Equalenza, which ones are the interesting for you? Or even positive or negative. These are pro or against or uh, these are interviews with him, these are uh, articles about him, these are just mentions, drop up, or even give you ex uh, extracts of what are in them. This is something we do because we need it. We need it to create the landscapes that will help you access your own memory. Our job is to ha not just to keep the memory of a nation, our job is to make people remember. And AI is a one of the tools we can use for that. We're hoping for a future where we can, and now I'll just change this. We're hoping for a future where we can, as a library, give us a service for you as a user of our digital library, an AI you talk to, chat with, that helps you find the material, answers your questions, and learns from you. And as a researcher, we hope to create an AI that can read four million newspapers once a week or once a month and find for researchers the material they're interested in, something which would be totally impossible for a human to do. And we're trying to planning, and this is where I'll end, I'm sorry, uh, to create a network amongst libraries, we're doing that alongside Stanford University Library of the, uh, from Stanford, a network of libraries working with AI, because no library can afford to compete with Google. But we need to. We need to compete with Google. So we do it together. So in December, you can find this on our web page, we invite to a Fantastic Futures conference alongside Stanford to gather the people from all over the world that works in libraries with this kind of thinking to try to create a network that in the future can create the tools that libraries and people can use to access the wall of information. Well, thank you. I need to go down from.